Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500. I've seen countless moments and events in history, but none quite as peculiar as the time when a clown almost killed me in Mexico in the year 2038. It was during an era when clowns had developed a sinister reputation, and the story I'm about to share only reinforced that sentiment. Mexico had become a hotspot for bizarre clown sightings in the early 2030s, fueled by urban legends and internet conspiracies. The vibrant streets of Mexico City were abuzz with whispers of these clowns, each more grotesque than the last. They were said to appear out of nowhere, frightening innocent bystanders and sometimes even causing harm. In 2038, I found myself in the bustling heart of Mexico City, on a mission to study the socio-cultural impact of these clown encounters. Disguised as a tourist, I began my investigation by speaking to locals and gathering anecdotes. It wasn't long before I stumbled upon a particular story that sent chills down my spine. A man named Carlos told me of his encounter with a clown named El Payaso de la Muerte, or, the Clown of Death. This clown was rumored to have a penchant for violence and bloodlust. Carlos claimed to have narrowly escaped the clown's murderous intent, leaving him traumatized and fearful for his life. Intrigued, I decided to dig deeper into this particular legend. I scoured the city, speaking to anyone who would listen, until I finally found the clown's alleged hideout. Hidden deep within the abandoned tunnels beneath the city, I discovered a dimly lit lair that reeked of rot and decay. As I cautiously stepped into the darkness, I felt a sense of impending doom. My instincts screamed at me to turn back, but my curiosity pushed me forward. I could sense that something was watching me, studying my every move. Suddenly, a sinister laugh echoed through the tunnel, and I realized I was not alone. The clown of death appeared before me, his grotesque face painted with a sickening grin. His eyes seemed to burn with malice, and his laugh sent shivers down my spine. I was paralyzed with fear, unable to move or even scream. The clown lunged at me, and I narrowly dodged his attack. I knew I had to find a way to escape, or I would become his next victim. I frantically looked around, searching for a weapon or an escape route. My eyes fell upon a rusty pipe on the ground, and I quickly grabbed it, brandishing it as a makeshift weapon. The clown of death snarled and lunged at me again, his razor-sharp claws glinting in the dim light. I swung the pipe with all my strength, connecting with his skull and sending him reeling backward. Seizing the opportunity, I sprinted down the dark tunnel, desperate to put as much distance between myself and the fiend as possible. I stumbled upon an old, decrepit door and, without hesitation, threw it open, stepping into a hidden underground chamber. To my horror, I found myself in the midst of a macabre gallery of terror. The walls were adorned with gruesome paintings depicting the clown's twisted fantasies. The floor was littered with the remains of those who had not been fortunate enough to escape his wrath. As I stood there, petrified by the horrific scene, a soft, mournful tune began to play. I followed the sound to a dusty old gramophone, the music eerily juxtaposed against the nightmare that surrounded me. I realized that this room was not only a testament to the clown's depravity but also a reflection of his own tortured psyche. I couldn't afford to dwell on the horror before me, as I knew the clown of death would be hot on my heels. I quickly searched for another exit, eventually finding a narrow passage that led to an old sewer system. I trudged through the filthy water, every sound amplified by the darkness and my heightened sense of dread. After what felt like an eternity, I emerged from the sewer, finding myself in a desolate part of the city. The sun was setting, casting an eerie glow on the crumbling buildings around me. Exhausted, I found a dilapidated structure to hide in for the night, praying that I had finally evaded my pursuer. The next day, I awoke to the distant sound of a carnival. Cautiously, I followed the music and found myself at the entrance of an abandoned amusement park. The once vibrant attractions now stood silent and decayed, a haunting reminder of the joy that had been swallowed by darkness. As I explored the park, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The clown of death had a way of instilling a sense of paranoia that burrowed deep into the psyche. I discovered a rickety old roller coaster, its cars filled with grotesque clown mannequins, each more horrifying than the last. My heart raced as I realized that this place was the clown's personal playground, a twisted sanctuary dedicated to his own depravity. I knew I had to find a way to end the clown of death's reign of terror, but how? The answer came to me as I stood at the edge of a murky pond. I noticed a strange, shimmering reflection in the water, an ancient amulet rumored to hold the power to banish evil spirits. 
As a time traveler, I knew that sometimes the solutions to our problems lay hidden in the past. I retrieved the amulet, hoping it would be the key to defeating the malevolent clown. With the amulet in hand, I set a trap for the clown of death. The stage was set, and as night fell, I could feel the tension in the air. It wasn't long before the clown appeared, his twisted laughter echoing through the abandoned park. As he lunged at me, I held the amulet high, and a burst of light erupted from it, enveloping the clown. The clown of death writhed in agony, his twisted form contorting as the amulet's power took hold. I could see the shadows of countless tortured souls escaping his body, finally freed from their torment. The clown, now weakened, stumbled back, his laughter turning to desperate cries for mercy. Seeing my chance, I pursued him deeper into the amusement park. As we raced through the decayed attractions, I realized that the park itself was a twisted reflection of the clown's soul, filled with the remnants of his victims and fueled by his insatiable hunger for fear. Our chase led us to a dilapidated funhouse, its distorted mirrors casting eerie reflections in every direction. The clown of death, now desperate and cornered, began to use the mirrors to his advantage, creating illusions and manipulating the environment to confuse and disorient me. I was forced to confront my deepest fears as the clown's influence began to seep into my mind. As I stumbled through the funhouse, I discovered an old carousel that had been transformed into a sinister tableau of horror. The once cheerful horses had been replaced with grotesque figures, each bearing the twisted visage of the clown of death. I knew that I had to destroy this vile monument to his reign of terror. I climbed onto the carousel, wielding the ancient amulet as my only weapon. As the carousel began to spin, each figure came to life, lunging at me with their razor-sharp claws. I fought them off, one by one, using the amulet's power to banish them back into the darkness. As the final figure fell, I spotted the clown of death, cowering in the shadows. He knew that his time had come, and as I approached him, I could see the fear in his eyes. I held the amulet to his face, preparing to banish him once and for all. But as I looked into his eyes, I saw a flicker of something unexpected, a deep, unspoken sadness. In that moment, I realized that the clown had not always been a monster. He had once been a man, tormented by his own inner demons and twisted by the darkness within him. I knew that the only way to truly defeat him was not to destroy him, but to help him confront and conquer the darkness inside. So, instead of banishing him, I used the amulet to help the clown of death confront his tortured past. I showed him the man he had once been, and the potential for redemption that still lingered within him. As the amulet's power washed over him, I saw the darkness slowly recede, replaced by a newfound sense of hope. The clown of death, now a changed man, looked at me with gratitude in his eyes. He vowed to use his second chance to help others who had been lost to darkness, just as he had been. Together, we worked to dismantle the twisted sanctuary he had created, releasing the trapped souls and bringing peace to the haunted amusement park. As we continued our mission, I discovered that the clown of death had once been part of a troop of clowns, all of whom had succumbed to the darkness that had overtaken him. Each member of the troop had been transformed into a twisted version of their former selves, spreading fear and chaos throughout Mexico. With the help of the amulet, we set out to find and redeem the other clowns. We encountered a fire-breathing clown who had set entire villages ablaze, fueled by his own rage and pain. As we approached him, the heat was nearly unbearable, but the amulet's power shielded us from the searing flames. We showed him the path to redemption, just as we had with the clown of death, and the inferno that surrounded him slowly died down. Another member of the troop was a sinister, snake-like clown who could manipulate shadows to do his bidding. He had used his powers to plunge entire towns into darkness, leaving the residents terrified and disoriented. When we confronted him, the shadows seemed to come alive, reaching out to ensnare us. But the amulet's light pierced through the darkness, and we guided the shadow-wielding clown back towards the light. During our journey, we also discovered a network of followers who had been seduced by the twisted allure of the clowns. These individuals had dedicated their lives to spreading fear and chaos in the name of the clown troop. We infiltrated their ranks, using the amulet to reveal their true natures and helping them break free from the clutches of darkness. As word of our mission spread, we were approached by a mysterious stranger who claimed to have knowledge of the source of the darkness that had corrupted the clowns. He told us of a cursed artifact, hidden deep within the heart of an ancient temple, which had been used to summon the darkness into the world. 
He warned us that unless the artifact was destroyed, the darkness would continue to spread, and the clown's redemption would be incomplete. With this newfound knowledge, we embarked on a perilous journey to find the cursed artifact. We ventured deep into the uncharted wilderness, braving treacherous terrain and facing dangerous creatures along the way. The further we traveled, the stronger the amulet's power became, as if it was guiding us towards our goal. Finally, we reached the ancient temple, a massive structure hidden in the heart of a dense jungle. Its walls were adorned with intricate carvings depicting the clowns in their original, uncorrupted forms. We felt a powerful sense of foreboding as we entered the temple, the darkness within palpable and oppressive. As we ventured deeper into the temple, we found the cursed artifact, a grotesque, obsidian statue of a grinning clown. The malevolent energy radiating from it was almost unbearable, and we knew that this was the source of the corruption that had plagued the clowns. With a deep breath, we raised the amulet and focused its power on the statue. A blinding light filled the chamber, causing the statue to crack and crumble. As the darkness was banished, we felt a sense of relief and tranquility wash over us. The curse had been lifted, and the clowns were finally free from the torment that had consumed them. With their redemption complete, the former clown of death and his troop dedicated their lives to spreading joy and laughter, forever grateful for the second chance they had been given. And as for me, I continued my travels through time, seeking out the countless stories that history had yet to reveal. Until we meet again, farewell.